So among all the artificial political factions in the United States, you had like, you know, like liberals, conservatives, those like Green Party freaks, the uh, libertarians. Well, in this particular case, it's the liberals and libertarians who are right. Well, kind of. They got the surface right, but it goes much deeper than what they're digging up. So, the war on drugs. What was it meant to do? Well, in truth, it was meant to divide us and to dismantle communities who could potentially become a threat to the deep state. That's what it's meant to do, okay? So what the liberals and libertarians think the war on drugs is, is pretty much Nixon initiated it to get rid of chunks of the Democratic voter base. Again, much deeper than that. Because what you need for those oligarchs and the Illuminati to maintain control is division. Today, it's the Republicans and the Democrats that are hyper-partisan. But back then, it wasn't quite as different. It was the blacks and the whites, the hippies, and those traditional old-school conservative retards. And the hippies are retards, too, but I don't like the conservatives as much. Those old-school, do whatever the fu America, salute the flag, bullshit. Those kind of people. Sorry. Off topic, I know, but I just had to bring it up. Anyway, when the war of drugs was brought in, it was originally meant to um, stimulate new conflict, because conflict needs to be com constant. That's part of the Illuminati strategy. Keep conflict constant. So how do you do that? Create more tension between the races. Create a policy that discriminates against one of them, in addition to other policies. And you have these policies go back and forth. So first, you have the Voting Rights Act, right? Get rid of segregation. Woohoo, yeah. A lot of the whites didn't like that. Caused more conflict. Then you got the war on drugs, which, you know, gets more of the minorities arrested. Creates more conflict. Makes the blacks angry at the whites. It makes the whites angry at the blacks. That's what it does. Actually, if you think about it, actually, it kind of happens today, too. A different way. So, that's a different topic. So, they continue this war. And this, by the way isn't just like the conservatives now. This is both parties initiating this war to basically enslave people, to make different parts of society seem weak, and to make everyone else in society view them as weak. You know, the drug addicts. When in reality, they're victims of the deep state propaganda as well. Let's, let's face the facts here. We're all victims. Like, not the, ooh, my gender. No, like, I mean, like, we're all victims of the corruption of the deep state. The corruption of the Dark Shadow Council and the corruption of the Illuminati. Wake up. So anyway, going on from Nixon to Reagan. So what does Reagan do in the 80s? Introduces crack to the United States. Ah, oh, Steve, it's a crazy idea. I mean, not really if you think about it. If you're going by the old model of conflict, more conflict, the easier the population is in control because they're not busy fighting you. They're not busy fighting the, the, the leadership, the real leadership. They're busy fighting each other. When those people in society who have been treated like shit, like more so than everybody else, begin to organize, what do they do? They break them up. They break them up. What, what, how do they break them up? The war on drugs. Arrest all their leaders. What? Oh, they're all doing LSD? They're all smoking a little schweed? No schweed? All snor snorting drugs? What do you do? Well, schweed isn't really addictive, so you introduce them to something new. You, just, you know, a little bit of crack. Get some addicted, maybe kill some of them too if they overdose. That's less, you know, less people willing to rebel. Less people willing to fight back against the establishment. Now granted, of course, they didn't know the, um, the real establishment. They were like, you know, rebelling against traditional conservatives who are basically the pawns of the real establishment. So indirectly, they were causing trouble for the actual leader leadership. So that's how the war on drugs continues today. You take... Individuals who question the authority of the state, and indirectly, of course, because they, because they question the authority of the state, they question the authority of the state's leaders. And that's what causes trouble for the leaders of the state, is when their bosses aren't happy. That's when assassinations happen. That's when things go wrong. You want to you stop things from going wrong? You do what the Dark Council wants you to do. And if they want you 
to introduce some drugs to that little itty bitty population that may be causing you a little bit of trouble, you do it. Now I know there's some people that claim uh, Reagan didn't purposely put the drugs over the border. Um, I can get where they're coming from. Like they're they're saying Reagan just let you know he he didn't actually ship the drugs over to the United States. He just like let the cartels go through and just look the other way. No, no, he fully brought the drugs over here. He was fully involved in it. Too many people like fucking Reagan. I hate fucking Reagan. I hate fucking Bush. I hate the other Bush. I hate Clinton. I hate Obama. Trump's just a figurehead. They're all figureheads. So this moves on to modern times and any of the war on drugs. Again, this is people telling me, but Steve, but Steve, Bernie Sanders wants to end the war on drugs. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. The, pe the people upstairs, they're noticing the society's trying to catch on to them a little bit. Realizing this little herb that really doesn't have any negative effects is classified the same as these drugs that have a lot of effects. So they're realizing the whole excuse of sending people to jail for years for smoking a little bit of Swede, a little bit of pan, a little bit of pot isn't working anymore. They need their excuses, their igniters of conflict to be realistic. So all they're doing here is adding a new, a new ingredient to this equation. The war drug is not gonna is not gonna end. Maybe they'll legalize pot. Maybe they won't. But they're still gonna be siphoning cocaine, heroin especially these days, folks. Heroin's nonstop. They're gonna be keep implanting it into your communities, killing people, causing the conflict, keeping the conflict rolling. That's what they do. That's what they're supposed to do. Because when we're not in conflict, we're all sitting together, sharing our ideas and thinking, not fighting with each other. That's when we realize that the shit that's been being fed to us for years is fucking wrong. It's all a lie. And that's when we'll organize and we will, o we will overcome our oppressors. And they will no longer have power over us. Is when we all get together and face the truth. And it's going to take some time to do that, folks. But I swear to you, it will happen eventually. This is Truth Bomb. This is your host, Steve, signing out.